Hello, my name is Alex McGeorge. I'm an engineer here at Immunity. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the White Phosphorus Internet Explorer 8 Sandbox Escape Module. So if, you're used, if you've been playing with uh, the IE CSS import bug that White Phosphorus put out a couple months ago, one of the things you're gonna be frustrated with is the fact that you can't actually run a local. This is due to the uh, sandboxing technology that's in Internet Explorer 8, which has proven to be quite formidable. Now, if you're following some of the news in the industry, specifically uh, the news out of Cansec West and their Pwn to Own contest, you'll have heard already that a couple different technologies for escaping the Internet Explorer sandbox have already been debuted. The one we're going to look at today is from White Phosphorus. Now, this does depend on Java, but it's a fairly ubiquitous piece of software in the browser market, so you're going to find it on a lot of hosts. So I think you're going to be able to see a pretty good return on investment for this particular uh, module. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prep Canvas to serve a client-side module. To do this, I'm going to use the HTTP server module. Uh, the client D module, when it's trying to fingerprint the remote host, can initialize different parts of host memory, excuse me, target memory, um, that can be disadvantageous towards exploitation. So what we're going to do is choose the HTTP server module. It's just really simple Python web server meant for serving exploits, nothing fancy. So I'm going to provide my module name, I'm satisfied with port 8080, and I'm good to go. So I click on OK, and I see Canvas has already said it's ready to go. So I'm going to move over here to my Windows 7 VM. I already have Internet Explorer up, and I'm going to go ahead and surf to my Canvas box. Now you can see here in the background my Canvas window. I'm already going through the process of exploiting this host, and we can see some of the node startup traffic here. I'm resolving addresses in kernel32.dll, and it's just now a matter of time before I get my shell. And there we are. So one of the issues that we have with this shell is we're actually fairly limited in terms of what we can do. Case in point, what I'm going to show you is a local exploit that is um, applicable to this particular VM, but it's not going to be able to fire. So MS Enable EUDC requires the modification of a very particular registry value on the target host. When we run it here, we're going to see uh, that the exploit is going to fail, not because we couldn't upload the files, not because the box is invulnerable, but because we can't touch the registry in the way we need to due to Internet Explorer's sandboxing. So as this module progresses, we're going to see, and if you want to see this for yourself, please feel free to go ahead and use um, any of the tools that monitor uh, the system registry. I'm a big fan of the system terminals tools, obviously. Uh, Mark Rasinovich is kind of the man when it comes to those things. So let's see where we're at. And we can see, all right, my local failed. But it's important to remember it's not because this box isn't vulnerable. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my white phosphorus exploits. I'm going to choose a local exploit. I'm going to choose my Windows 7 IE sand, excuse me, my Windows 7 uh, IE sandbox escape. So one of the other peculiar things we have to do for this module to work is we have to set ourselves as the target. So to do that, I'm going to right click on this host. Excuse me, I'm going to right click on my local node first. I'm going to go down, I'm going to set the node that I already want as my target, so the node that I already have, that is. I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to accept the default settings, click OK. And while this is working, I'm going to bring up my Windows 7 window here. You're going to see sort of what the user experience looks like uh, when this is going on. In this case, we have a Java 6 start. Uh, because we're using Java, this is exactly what we expect. Any Windows 7 user that has Java installed um, is going to be seeing this pretty much same exact thing when a Java application starts. So now if I go back here to Canvas, I can see I've got a brand new node, and I'm now outside the Internet Explorer sandbox. So to test this, I'm going to rerun my local exploit. And again, we're going to choose Epson Able EUDC. This has actually uh, recently been patched as MS11011. We'll go ahead and run this again. And we're going to see if we work. So 
So as you can see again, the exploit is going through the exact same steps that it took last time. Uh, as far as MS Enable EUDC is concerned, these two nodes are essentially identical. The only difference is now we're going to be able to touch the registry key we needed in order to achieve successful exploitation. And as we can see, it looks like we're getting our new shell startup. We're resolving global alloc, global free, which are some of the function calls we have to resolve immediately uh, upon successful shell startup. So this is looking good for us. Now you will note a bit of lag here. And the reason for that is that we're actually, um, we're gonna get a new node that's tunneled through our existing node. So what's happening is 178 is gonna be starting up a universal most deaf listener and then come back, connecting back to itself, and then pro essentially acting as a proxy um, back to our local node. So you're gonna see a bit of lag as a result because most def isn't really a routing protocol. It's not designed to be uh, an efficient route, uh, excuse me, efficient routing protocol, but we do end up getting our shell, which is exactly what we want. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna run the who am I command. And this is going to give us back the user that we're currently running in, which is me running as. And you can see we're the local system account. And if we go back to our original node, and let's say we wanted to rerun Who Am I, we would see that I'm running as my regular user, Alex M. So I hope this has been informative. Internet Explorer Sandbox Breakout. Sandbox Breakouts in general are always really cool to see. Um, white Phosphorus is pretty awesome for getting this together. Um, it's a very cool module and it works really well. So if you have uh, questions about this particular module, you can always address them to support at immunityinc.com. Um, please don't forget we have our Infiltrate Conference coming up in April. It's selling out quickly. All of our training is already sold out. But we're going to have a lot of great speakers. There's going to be a lot of great stuff for people to learn, even if you're just interested in coming to the conference by itself. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And we hope to see you again soon.